Hello, welcome to the first in a series of videos on the fundamentals of synthesizer programming. My name is Dr. Joseph Akins, and I'm a professor at the Department of Recording Industry at Middle Tennessee State University, where I teach music, MIDI, and synthesis. We are here in Recording Studio A, and I'm sitting next to a Moe Voyager, one of our instruments that we use to teach and learn synthesis. Learning the fundamentals of synthesizer programming is learning the various components of a synthesizer and how they interconnect. Once you learn this, you will be able to program a synthesizer, creating your own sounds, and go beyond factory presets. Once you create sounds, they can be used in a, a musical score, a song, a soundtrack, etc. So if you are a composer, a songwriter, uh, a producer, a recording engineer, these fundamentals are essential for you. The history of voltage-controlled synthesis begins in the 1960s. Bob Moog designed and built synthesizers that were comprised of many different modules. These modules were connected by patch cables. If it's an analog synthesizer like a Moog Voyager, or a virtual synthesizer like you would find in Reason, they still use the same basic structure that was used with the modular synthesizer. Looking at the Mini Moog Voyager, you'll see that there's various components, just like the modular synthesizer. But rather than being connected by patch cables, they're connected under the hood. They're connected with two different types of signals, an audio signal or a control signal. An audio signal is part of the audio path, which you eventually hear, and then the control signals are used for one component to control another with voltage control. We will be looking at all the various components of the synthesizer and how they're connected by those two types of signals. Looking at this diagram, you will see a flow chart. All the various components of the synthesizer fall into one of these three categories, a source, a modifier, or a controller. A source is the beginning of the audio path. Good example, an oscillator or a noise generator. The red arrow is an audio signal. That audio signal reaches a modifier, which will somehow modify the audio path. A good example is a filter. Beneath the source, you see a controller. The blue arrow represents a control signal. The controller is going to control the source with a voltage control signal. An example of a controller is a keyboard, a low frequency oscillator, or an envelope generator. Looking at another diagram, you'll see that we have an oscillator to a filter and an amplifier. This is the audio path found in most any synthesizer. The oscillator is a source. If you want to adjust the pitch, the frequency, go to the oscillator. The filter is a modifier. If you want to adjust the timbre or the spectrum, go to the filter. And if you want to adjust the loudness, the amplitude, then go to the amplifier. These are a source followed by a modifier and a second modifier. Understanding this is the basic foundation of synthesizer programming. In the next video, we will continue with sources in more detail. For more in-depth coverage of synthesizer programming, be sure to check out my book from the website themidiprofessor.com. There, you will find the electronic music books we use at MTSU and more. Thanks for checking out the Fundamentals of Synthesizer Programming video series.